Welcome back. With this video, we are starting masterclass lectures on adaptive control and learning. So far, we have covered a lot until this video, and I hope you are enjoying these lectures. All right, the first masterclass lecture is about my recent book called Derivative Free Adaptive Control. It is co authored by myself and my PhD advisor, Anthony Calis. And this book, the material is related uh, to my PhD work. All right, so I would like to also mention that this derivative free adaptive control was flight tested by NASA on the Air Star vehicle, which you can see this fixed wing aircraft on the book cover. This is the Air Star of NASA. And this controller was able to suppress uncertainties in flight without any significant tuning. And it basically was successful during its very first flight. All right, so let's dive into this derivative-free adaptive control and I will explain uh, which problem it addresses in the adaptive control. Uh, before I move forward, here is the, you can access to this book through this link. Um, if you purchase the book, um, you don't have to, but you will get, you know, it is the type of, you know, we eliminated all the typos, um, not all, but a few that we had uh, in the original paper. And you can uh, find um, not only the state feedback version of it, and you can get more content. So basically this is the content of the book, Introduction, Standard Adapt Model Reference Adaptive Control. Uh, it is derivative free version, um, robustness to unmodel dynamics. You will find its output feedback case, applications to large scale systems, and some flight control applications, which is ended, which we conclude the book by conclusions and some possible future directions. So this is basically, you know, uh, most of them are published in the literature. Um, again, as I mentioned, sometimes when you uh, publish, you may have small typos, it, it may be grammatical errors, it may be some dimensional issues. Uh, all has been fixed on this book. But again, you can go to Google Scholar, uh, type derivative free adaptive control, um, you can access the first paper. And like you can write or output feedback, derivative free adaptive control, you can find the output feedback version. You can write derivative free adaptive control with unmodeled dynamics. So you can search and access these contents online as well. Again, if you cannot purchase the book, you can do Google Scholar. If you can, uh, you will have the um, basically uh, most uh, up to date version of the derivative free adaptive control framework. Anyway. Um, my, my, I have no intention to sell uh, my book or anything. I just wanted to mention this is my first book, so I am excited. Um, let's la dive into what it is. I am going to teach you um, uh, what we are doing different than standard model reference adaptive control. All right. Um, I am trying to. I will try to explain this in a simple context. Let's consider this uncertain um, dynamical system. My notation is a little bit different here as compared to previous um, uh, notation on the other videos. I am just consistent with the um, notation that we used in the book. So basically, delta uh, is the uncertainty which you have W transpose. T multiplied by beta. Beta is the basis function, which is known. Uh, you already know if the basis is unknown, you can use neural adaptive control using neural networks, radial basis functions. Again, I am not going to dive into those topics. I will purely focus on what is derivative free adaptive control and what will it buy to you. All right, so here is the nominal control architecture usual. Previously, I am using C to represent command. Again, to be consistent with the book, I am using R to represent the reference command. Here is the um, canceling the uncertainty, the adaptive term. So W hat transpose multiplied by the basis function. W hat is the estimation of the um, time varying uncertainty. When you insert this control signal to this uncertain system, you have this closed loop dynamics. We are going to call it AM, reference model AM matrix, design K1 such that AM is Hurwitz. Again, this is similar to AR notation, BR notation that I used in the previous videos. Just slight changes, but the same material. 
you adjust K2 to achieve a level of comment, uh, reference comment following performance. And this is the basic the weight estimation error, right? This is W tilde multiplied by the basis function. AM is her weight such that it satisfies this Lyapunov equation. And from this structure, we also have our reference model, which again, I am using M here for this video. Um, all right, so up to now, right, from here to here, nothing is different. We have the same problem formulation as in other model reference adaptive control videos. So if you remember up to, you know, we were using a derivative based weight update law. Here is the proposed derivative free weight update law. You have W hat. We don't have any derivative here. W hat equals to gamma one multiplied by W hat time minus some tau gamma two multiplied by this. So this is the error signal, right? E transpose. So previously we were using, right, w hat dot equals to some gamma beta of x, x minus xm transpose pb. So here, instead of having gamma, we have gamma two. We don't have any derivative. And we have this added term, which is the delayed version of the weight estimate. So why we are using this? Before I tell you why we are using this, yeah, you can use this for neuroadaptive control. Unlike standard um, uh, derivative-based weight update law, which we also call it parameter adjustment mechanism, um, right? For to, to, when you deal with W, uh, when you try to estimate these type of time varying uncertainties, or for neuroadaptive control, you need to add projection operator or a leakage term to maintain the boundedness of the closed loop system. You don't need to do this basically for um, neuroadaptive control. You don't need to add any modification term or projection operator to the derivative free weight update law. You can use the same structure when you have neuroadaptive control, when, the, um, when you have a time varying weight. Uh, no restrictions, just use the same um, format. So what does it buy you? Um, basically, what does it buy you is that it, this derivative free adaptive control concept expands the class of system uncertainties that your adaptive control handles. Basically here, the time varying uncertainty may not be differentiable, right? So it, it needs to be bonded, but we don't, this derivative free weight update law does not make any restriction on the time rate of change of this uncertain weight. It may be um, unbounded, right? Let's think about a quadcopter accidentally hits to a wall, some uncertainty or landing or you in flight, right? You are dropping a package from your quadcopter, your mass, uh, instantaneously change and in those um, instances WT is not differentiable and WT can vary sufficiently infinitely fast so these uh, basically situations are handled with derivative free uh, adaptive control and this is exactly what it buys you when WT is time varying but you know it can be unbounded w, uh, WT needs to be bounded W um, let me write it down. This can be unbounded. So this is exactly what derivative-free adaptive control buys you. All right, so um, you have three parameters to select. And I am going to show a MATLAB example in this video so that we can make these um, selections concrete. So this is a design parameter. It can, it is, it is, it can be zero to 0.999, you, you cannot select it to be one. Gamma uh, is uh, basically positive and tau is positive. As this being said, you can only select gamma equals to one when um, uncertainty is constant, then you can set gamma to be one. Um, if not, uh, just uh, select it on this range. I am not going to show the proof, um, okay? So proof is a little bit involved, but not hard. Okay, it is just, it is like some puzzle solving. Proof follows from this Lyapunov 
Lyapunov Krasovsky function candidate that you see here with the integral. And let's dive into the example. All right, um, as always, I am giving you the code. We have a pretty standard code, this, uh, code the cleaning process, simulation time is 100 seconds. There are some switches in the code that I introduced. Yeah, you know, you don't have to, but sometimes I would like to see the nominal performance without any uncertainty and without adaptation. So I am setting these switches to zero. Right now I am going to use it as one and one. I am going to insert uncertainty and adaptation will be on. Um, I have these two A and B matrices. Um, and here is my reference model, how I choose AM and BM. And this is how I obtain K1 and K1 and K2. And basically it is coming from, right? AM equals to A minus B K1. You can solve, that one, once you select AM, you can find K1 like this. Like the, likewise K2, right? So BM was uh, B K2. Once you set BM, um, you can obtain K2. Uh, solving the Lyapunov equation, I will uh, start with uh, these gamma 1, gamma 2, and tau um, selections. Um, this is the basically numerical example for uh, wink rack dynamics. And this is the initialization. Um, this is the uncertainty weight. Basically, before 20 seconds, I have no uncertainty. When it is 20 seconds, I am going to insert this uncertainty. Um, again, this is coming from the, uh, these uncertainties are coming from the book or uh, from the derivative free adaptive control paper. Um, some are, you can treat as some uncertainties. And I introduced that, you know, um, a sinusoidal signal to make this uncertainty time varying. Again, code yourself. Incre you can increase the frequency of sine to introduce the uncertainty faster and faster and faster. And uncertainty is not differentiable at 20 seconds. I am instantaneously changing it to this uncertainty. So there will be um, this jump. Um, reference comment basis function again this basis function is special to this um, wink rack dynamics phenomenon nominal controller adaptive controller actual controller and here is the uh, weight update law reference model uncertain system saving the data the most important point in implementing derivative free adaptive control in my opinion is this step basically this these three lines of code corresponds to W hat T minus tau or capital T based on the selection of the tau you have. And then um, basically these are the uh, for generating plots. Again, you can um, stop the video and take screenshots, code it yourself. Um, I always encourage that you should code it yourself. It's a nice learning experience and plus you can play with the code to explore it further. Um, let me uh, dive into the uh, simulation results. Again, I'm going to explain these plots. This is for gamma 1 equals to 0.5, gamma 2 equals to 1, and tau equals to 1. Black line is the reference comment. Red line is the first state of the reference model. That, um, and blue is the actual uncertain system's first state. And... Um, this is the second state we have and the reference model state. This is the control signal we have. And here I plot W and W hat multiplied by beta. Basically, this is the actual uncertainty, red. And this is, it is basically adaptive control signal, right? So it is estimation. So for these selections, um, we actually, these results are not bad, but um, we insert the uncertainty here up to uh, 20 seconds. We have a very good performance. Then uh, fair performance is de degraded on X1, more degraded on X2. And our controller cannot, it does a decent job, but we have basically, we do not, adaptive estimate does not perfectly match with the uncertainty for cancellation purposes. Now, 
I am making the first step, ta or capital T, to be low, lower. So based on my experience, um, since I developed it, if you decrease it, you will obtain a, you know, a faster, more agile response from the adaptive control to suppress the uncertainty. As you see here, we, doing, we are doing much better as compared to the previous uh, selection of T, which was one. In, term, in terms of canceling the uncertainty, we have an improved performance in both X1 and X2. Now, I am increasing gamma 2 next from 1 to 10, and we have a very nice performance. We almost, almost perfectly canceling the uncertainty. We have some little areas for improvement. And this is a perfect um, following of the, almost perfect following of the, a reference model. We have some mild oscillations here. To get rid of this, you can increase also gamma 1 to 0.9. So this is, as you see, we are now doing much better in these uh, areas and almost at the 20 seconds, right? When we insert the uncertainty, we almost instantaneously match with adaptive control signal matches with the uh, uh, magnitude of the uncertainty and cancels it and this is what derivative uh, free adaptive control will buy you and um, if you have an uncertainty which has a bounded but time varying weight such that this time rate of change of the weight may be uh, unbounded depending on the application then um, I personally use derivative free adaptive control again I try to give some tuning guidelines um, this, in general, I selected to be 0 0.9, 0 0.95, 0 0.9, you know, 99, you can go up to that. Um, I usually select it to be 1, 5, 10, 20. I usually select it to be um, 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.01. So decreasing, increasing, don't exit 1, basically tend to make... Uh, this performance better and I hope you enjoyed this video um, we started masterclass lectures with derivative free adaptive control not because it is my PhD work and not because I have a book about that because it has been flight tested and um, it has mathematically proven and it is a very nice method in handling uncertainties with unbounded time rate of changes. All right, take care.